Well, here we are. I told you about part two. Anyway, I told you about the demo. So, we set it up, and we ran into this guy that worked there. His name was Todd. He was a drummer. But, because the deadline was like right there, we had no choice. We had to get this guy, and we explained to him, we had him listen to the music and say, can you do anything with this? This guy was a rock and roll drummer. Um, this guy, he played pop rock, rock and roll, was not a metal drummer at all. Plays no metal. And you can hear him in the background. So, myself and Rick had to figure out what the hell we're going to do. Also, all our equipment was bad. Rick's original Crown guitar was a piece of junk. It couldn't, it was too much feedback. It needed work. Um, at the time, I lost my EB3 bass. It was long gone, so I had a BC Rich bass. Rick's drum set, all the skins were worn. So, I had to go down to Guitar Center, ladies and gentlemen. Guitar Center. I had to break out the old checkbook. Bought this BC Rich for Rick. Um, it's got stickers added onto it. So if you saw the videos of the live concerts, it didn't have any stickers on it or anything like that. I put the stickers on. I should just take them off. And, uh, of course, put the warm blade thing in the back. Anyway, I bought the BC Rich. I had the drums all reskinned. I had my BC Rich bass tuned up. So, we had all that equipment ready to go. We had the amplifiers tuned up. By the way, this cost me 600 bucks to get everything done. 600. The studio, on the other hand, $100 an hour. 100 bucks an hour in that studio. So we had to get it right in the first few times. So it took roughly two hours to set all the gear up. His drum set, Todd's drum set, had to be set up, had to be mic'd, had to be tuned up. And inside the little box, I went inside, checked the microphone because I had to do the... Rick was going to do his guitar first. Then came bass, and then my vocals, and then we're going to do Todd's drums the last. So the clock was ticking. Rick goes in beautifully, lays all five tracks down with one take. Now, our, our album... No guitar solos whatsoever. Just like the Ramones when they did their first album. No guitar solos. Great. Sounded cool. No problem. Rick wiped it out. One run. Then I said, all right, Rick, you know that my bass playing is not as great as it will. As great as great. We need to get this done in one take. Rick says, all right, no problem. He goes in there with my BC Rich bass. Lays down all bass tracks with one take. All of them. So we're talking about roughly two to three hours for guitar and bass. And as for my vocals, I had to set up a little thing there to look at all my lyrics. I had it laid out on this little, this little stool. And I had the headphones on listening to Rick's guitar track. I could not lay down all the vocal tracks in one run. Some of the stuff took three to four takes. He had to piece together some of them until eventually I learned how to be able to do it without any mistakes. So that took another four to five hours to do. So then we had to come back um, the following week. Came back the following week, Rick... Of course, me and Rick had to 
helped Todd with his drums. He left his drum set set up. So we would have to play, and Todd would just not get it. He just couldn't get it. And we knew we were in trouble because he just could not get it. He could not do the, uh, you know, double bass and all that stuff. He couldn't do it. So whenever we play, we had to go inside the other part of the studio, and Rick would be playing. Right? And then, when there was a certain part, Rick would just point to him which part of his drum for him to hit. Let's say if he had to do a roll or a, or a double bass. He would just play and then point to it like the double bass drum set. So he'd be sitting there doing the double bass. It took roughly about fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars of studio time just on Todd's drumming alone. Retake after retake until they pieced it together and then Todd had to learn it throughout the entire piece. So we did it. Finally, then it took another, I'd say roughly about two weeks, two to three weeks before um, Brad put all the music together. Each track, all five tracks. Meanwhile, I'm writing checks like they were made of water. I mean, it's just going through them like, just... So then we had to get the CD and the master CDs. We had to get the master. So each song cost $500 to do to master each song in a professional studio. Five songs, 500 bucks a piece. Do the math. So by this time, I was seeing, began to see money flying away. Because I was burning through all my money really quick, besides paying rent, getting the car fixed. So the band thing really started putting the screws into me. So I get the masters done inside of a week. Then I made, I shopped around and tried to get a company to actually take the album and release it. So I finally went to these guys from Open Grave Records. And I talked to this guy and said, yeah, we got a five track EP or album we want to release. He says, well, can you send me samples of what it sounds like? So we sent them, I sent them samples of what it sounds like. He says he likes it. Sure, but it's going to cost you to distribute the CDs. So, meanwhile, Nick Figueroa, a big call out to Nick, he designed the album cover. And then we just, we did, then I did the back covers, and then uh, the liner notes. I did all that stuff later on. So, Open Grave Records says, we'll do it, but it's going to cost you 2000 bucks. We're going to make 1000 CDs, and we're going to, you know, we're going to, distribute them all over the world. So then went another $2,000 and I'd write a contract for it. So after it was sent out, all the paperwork of the album cover, we didn't have a symbol yet at the time. The symbol came later. So we had to just do a regular, regular Morn Blade. You know, it was just, it was shitty. But this is the result that came back. This is what the album looks like. Morn Blade Mangled Lies from Open Grave Records. Look at this thing. It's kind of reflecting. Open Grave Records. First track on there, Morn Blade. Second one, Lord of Chaos. Three set, four Holy War. Five Mangled Lies. 1,000 of these. Here's the inside cover. That right there is Waco, Texas. You guys remember Waco? And it says Morn Blade on the top. Morn Blade. Guitars and bass, Rick Humphrey. Drums, Todd Keller. And vocals, Jeff D. Right there. 
And on the bottom, Court at Nightingale Studios, mixed by Burt Malo. Marcus, set is dedicated to Spike Cassie DRI because he was fighting cancer at the time. So there you go. So the album came out. We were cranked about it. We were cranked. We're like, hell yeah. So we took Todd and we started practicing because we're going to do some live shows.